Hello and welcome to episode 118 of Nuggets Dungeon Terrain. In this episode I'll be creating two more monsters. The first is going to be a trap golem. And imagine an alchemist or an enchanter going through a dungeon, collecting all the traps and combining them, merging them all into one giant creature. Here you can see I'm using a small dentist tool and shaping some polymer clay. The clay's been cut into blocks and I'm going to make these look like chunks of stone that have been pulled from the walls. The bit I'm working on here is going to be the head. It's not an even block piece, but an L-shaped piece. It's going to have two recesses that look like eyes, but the whole overall piece will be laying on its side. Where the eyes are will actually be dart traps, and you'll see the darts coming out of them. Here I'm just using a pencil, which is just the right height for that L recess. That way, as I'm pressing down and shaping, I'm not pushing the whole piece over. Here I'm using a square shaped cocktail stick to press in the two eyes. The left arm will be made of stone, but it'll have these two recesses in it. Inside of these will be two spear traps, loaded and ready to go. Here the different sections of polymer clay have been oven baked and assembled together. Now the dart trap eyes, I decided to cut the ends of these toothpicks at different lengths to make it look like one of them was firing out. With the overall body shape done, I then collected some different bits and pieces to add on as different trap components. I'm going to turn the chest into some clockworks. At the start it looks like I'm doing some kind of sex robot, but you just have to trust the process sometimes.
I wanted a scythe like blade to come out of the side. To make it look like it would move, I added it to this clockwork gear before I stuck it on. Now half of the gear stuck between the two spears to make it look like the mechanism was in place and the spears could actually fly up. In my bits box I found a few arrow flights so I've made a couple of tiny holes in this arm and I'm putting them all in there. It's to kind of give the players the idea that whatever they're going to hit or fire at the golem with, it's not going to make a lot of difference. I'm placing a tiny light brazier on the top. This is going to be made out of a small earring piece. So I've put a tiny hole here and I'm just pushing that in. Later I'll make a flame effect, as I have in other videos, by using some heavy artist gel. Here's a look at the piece with most of the painting done. You'll see the right hand is a combination of a couple of different blades. I've made it look like the top piece moves. And now the second piece. This is going to be a chain golem. I know someone submitted something like this on the Tabletop Crafters Guild, but I actually had finished this quite some time ago and thought I might as well post it anyway. If you had an unlimited number of chains, you probably wouldn't need this middle bit, but I wanted to save materials, so I've used a scrap piece of XPS foam to make a core that the chains will be wrapped around. I stuck the foam core to the base and then brought out my selection of different gauges of chains. I stuck some of the chain onto the bottom and then as I wrapped it around the core I used some pins to hold it in place. Here I didn't get the angle quite right. No one wants to pick up a mini with pins sticking out the other side. There was no point making this if it looked like some kind of rust dragon had just pooped out a pile of chains. Some of the chains needed to look like there were arms flailing about. To do this, I used this little alligator clip with a piece of wire, placed just to exactly the height I wanted, looped it through a piece of the chain, and held it into position. I was then able to put more super glue on those particular arms to strengthen them. Anyway, that's the basic procedure. It's a very simple build. All you need is to have the right materials. 
In this picture you can see I've only added the first type of gauge, but as I proceeded I added some of the thinner pieces to the outside. Then the whole piece was painted black, then silver, brushed over, and then I added some rust effects. So thanks for watching, if this sparked a couple of crafting ideas, or maybe the different monsters intrigued you, remember there's a lot more if you just follow back into the monsters playlist.